All right, let's talk a little bit more about fiber mesh in a, like a hair type way. So I'm going to hit the comma key. Let's go into project. Let's go ahead and load up the demo anime head. Let's hit no. Turn off perspective. Uh, we can probably turn off the floor. I'm just going to mask out. Hold down control, mask lasso, where there might be some hair growth on here. I'm going to fiber mesh. I'm going to open up modifiers. Uh, click preview just above modifiers. Let's really crank up that length profile and then we'll crank down our max uh, fibers here. Uh, open up those width profile and I'm going to maximize this because I'm just basically going to get hair strips uh, if I can. We're going to take this coverage, crank it all the way up. We're going to take scale root and tap in, type in one and then scale tip, type in one. Uh, twist, we'll just go ahead and turn that down to zero. And for gravity, we'll go ahead and crank that up to one. So we've got these hairs kind of draping through here. So let's take this uh, base color and turn it to zero and tip color, turn it to zero. And you can see basically just got a bunch of hair cards uh, on here. So now the max fibers, I can probably crank down quite a bit. And then the length profile, I'm going to turn down. And let's call this our fiber mesh hair. So I can go through here if this coverage is a little bit much. I can take this coverage, knock it back just a bit. And you can see that this kind of does have some gravity in it. I can actually turn the camera upside down and I can just tweak the gravity and it'll go up. But of course it's not dynamic gravity. So we can go through here and we can kind of put in some gravity here. If we want to, we can also put in a texture. So if you put in like uh, this rainbow texture 41, uh, it's going to go left to right, but just with anything that's fiber mesh, it goes root to tip as well. Just to demonstrate that, let's take that texture Let's load up texture 41 in here. We're going to choose it. We're going to rotate it. So it's going to go red or green to purple. And then we'll load that texture up. And now you're going to see, again, we are having, it's it's not like micro poly or nano mesh or micro mesh where it's going to go per polygon. It's actually going to go uh, all the way root to tip from a texture. That's how it's yeah, UV'd. So that can come in handy, especially if you want to paint your own hair texture, you can apply that texture root to tip just like this. Now, when we go in here and we uh, BPR render this, you're going to see it gets, uh, let's go and turn off polyframe here. You're going to see it gets, it turns into like cubes and it's uh, extruded cubes and they look a lot smoother. That's underneath your BPR settings here. So we, uh, we have it turned up to sides of four, uh, subdivisions of two. Uh, what I'm going to do, if you want to make this like real geometry, you can actually go in here to your profile and turn that up to four. And then you can say, okay, so now you can actually see the cubes. And then segments, you can also turn up. That'll add uh, more divisions uh, down. So you get a little bit more geometry to play with. Of course, if we want, you know, let's turn that profile back to one. We can always add dynamic thickness now in ZBrush 2021. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to take this hair. I'm going to go all the way to the top here. We're going to hit accept. So now we have a subtool up here. Now we've got our original head subtool, and now we have uh, fiber mesh. Now, of course, we can dynamically uh, play around with this fiber mesh here. So we can go over here. Let's get rid of this brush menu. Go ahead and drag the dynamics menu over here. And if we just run uh, everything as is and just run gravity, it's just going to his hair's just going to fall off and fall onto the floor. Uh, which, if you turn on the floor plane, you'll see that. So we need a way to mask the roots, ideally. So we can go down here. Since it is a fiber mesh, we can go right in here to the masking menu and there is a mask by fibers. You can just click this fiber mask. There's even a fiber mask profile in here. That's going to mask it like a gradient root to the tip. Uh, if you want to like kind of capture it a little closer to the root, um, you can control drag to unmask and then fiber mask again. Actually, it probably needs to go the other way. There you go. So this should just grab just the root. And then now if we run the simulation, it did what I told it to do. If we go through here and we turn off the head, or we go into solo mode, you're going to see it just uh, mask the root, and then the rest just fell right through the head because we... <laughs> that's a pretty cool look. Uh, we didn't tell it there's a collision volume, or collision volume's off. So let's undo that, and let's go over here. So we have the fiber mesh selected, so I'm going to take this... I'm just going to go over here and I say calculate a collision volume, which is the head that's in that scene. Anything that's visible in your subtools can will be calculated as a collision volume. So now when we hit run simulation, uh, those hairs will uh, actually collide with the head. Now we can make these a little more self-aware too. You see they're kind of crashing into each other. So let's go over here to self-collision. We'll crank that up uh, to one and you'll see now the hairs don't uh, want to collide with each other. So that's nice. And there's a, probably a little cushion around the head as well. We can drop that inflate value down a little bit so that 
it'll kind of collide there. Uh, now this is geometry, so we can go in here to our geometry tab and we can say go into dynamic subdiv. We can turn dynamic on. That's going to want to run a smooth. We can turn that down to zero for now, uh, but we can add a thickness. So we can go through here and we can add a dynamic thickness here. Uh, and we can still run the simulation just fine. It's just going to look like noodles. Uh, but you know, again, this is dynamic and you can run a smooth subdiv on this as well if you'd like. So now with this, it is also fiber mesh. You can go in here to BG brush groom uh, hair toss, let's say. So BG groom, BGA is groom hair toss. You can go through here and you can like comb these fibers around as, as needed, just like you can normally. And then you can go through here and you can rerun the simulation. It'll kind of go and run down. However, you can also go in here to your BC brush cloth brushes and we can do like cloth wind and we can blow the hair around because again, this is just uh, dynamic geometry now that we can go through here. We can just like run a, run a <laughs> hair dryer on the, on the back of it and kind of blow it back if we want to. And then again, just rerun the simulation and everything will tumble uh, right back into place. Uh, BG brush groom, oops, sorry, BC. Uh, any of these should be fine. Cloth and flate will go through and kind of do a blow dryer as well, effect as well as hold as, as well as holding down alt. You know, any of those brushes should work fine. And as far as the gravity, just like when we were in uh, the actual fiber mesh simulation, we can set the set the direction of the gravity here. So just tilt our put our camera where we want, hit the set direction button, and now when we run the simulation, the hair will uh, fall up. And it'll also, if we turn on liquify. Go ahead and set the direction and have it run down. Now it'll run down like uh, kind of like it's in water, but it'll kind of give you a little uh, Medusa uh, snakes as well. Now, but you can also replace these with curves if you wanted to. It's just geometry. So if you go in here and we turn off dynamic, uh, you can also go down here and you can change this. You can feel free to change this texture map out uh, whenever you want. And it'll even render uh, transparency if you'd like. So if you want to bring in, like I said before, your own hair card texture, there's even transparency. You can turn uh, transparency up and anything that's pure black will be transparent. And I'm going to go in here to the BPR settings for my fiber mesh and just say sides to two. So we just render out the hair card so you can see there's transparency in there now. But you can also go in here and turn your texture off. And again, you can just treat this like geometry. So if you go in here, Let's go hold down control and just unmask. If you go in here and put a division down here, and then we say poly group poly loop. So I'm going to do a poly loop. Let's make that a little more obvious on one side of these. And we go ahead and isolate them as well and say, you know, split hidden. Uh, now I can go through here and I can say stroke that poly group's border. And then I can go in here to B, I brush insert, IMM curve put a necklace link down here, and now I can just replace all of those with a necklace link. So I can go ahead and tap off to get rid of that curve. I can go to visibility, hide point, uh, control shift drag to invert that visibility, and then geometry, modify topology, and delete hidden to get rid of that. So now I have hair that's been replaced by this. So imagine, you know, you could replace this hair with geometry, or like we did before, if you just want to turn this into geometry. You can just turn on dynamic and then hit apply and now this is geometry. You can hold down now, you can hold down control shift and get all the yellow ones and you could, you know, run IMMs down here or you can just keep these as they are. Go through here and you could, uh, if it gives you that error, you can go in here to mesh integrity, fix mesh and then we can turn on dynamic, turn off thickness unless, you know, you like that look. You can go here to crease PG to crease our poly group, we'll say smooth subdiv of one, or I'm sorry, crease level of one, smooth subdiv of two, and get a little fall off on those. We'd even go through here, hold down shift, and you can smooth uh, these ends if you want. You can go through here and you can inflate if you want, because it's just geometry, so you can do what you want to do uh, to get the look that you're going for. Now, there's a couple things I didn't really spell out as I was going back through this. So, think about my YouTube channel and you type out hair. There's going to be some hair creation techniques in here as well as if you type in curves, there's going to be a lot about controlling curves and that's, uh, you know, new curve brush functionality and stuff like that. Now, one other thing I forgot to mention is if you want to go like root to tip, thick to thin, you can change this uh, width coverage over here. 
this maxed out is going to go thick to thick. Of course, the more you drop this down, the more it's going to go thick to thin. So if you go in here and then you hit accept, now you're kind of back to where we started. Uh, of course, this is just geometry at this point. That can also be semi-controlled as fiber mesh here, so we can go in here to our, again, masking, mask by fibers, crank that profile up, so we just grab the roots here, run our dynamic simulation, make sure we have a collision volume calculated, maybe turn on a little self-collision, maybe go in here to our dynamic, add some thickness, and we're good to go. Now as far as that controlling curves here, if you did have a very specific type of hair that you wanted to make, let me see if I have any, I don't really, but you know, we can make one real quick. Let's go out of edit mode, hit control N to clear a canvas, go ahead and grab a poly mesh 3D here, go to the very bottom, uh, go into edit mode, go to initialize Q cube, you can turn on polyframe so you can see what we're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and scale this out using a hit W, scale this out in this direction. Uh, go under Z modeler brush, BZM, hover over an edge, we'll go ahead and say bevel, edge loop complete, and we'll just make this into three even sections, or we can go in here to insert multiple edge loops. Hold down Alt to delete that one, and then just go in here and divide that up uh, into three equal parts. Hold down Control Shift, grab these top ones here, hit Control W, Control Shift, grab these bottom ones here, hit, hit Control W, um, and this is just basic like tripart curve mesh creation. Again, old school ZBrush techniques, but we're just going to utilize this for some hair cards. Uh, we can actually simplify this. We can go in here to insert multiple edge loops, hold down Alt, get rid of these. I just rotated it at 45 degrees, so as we snap the camera here, we're looking at it at this angle. So now we can hit B, create insert mesh new. Go in here to our stroke menu. Let's go ahead and dock it over on the left. We're going to turn on curve mode. We're going to grab our brush menu now. Go down here to modifiers. Let's turn on weld points. Maybe turn up our curve res. Maybe turn on stretch. And now we've got, you know, kind of a hairbrush. We can also go back down here to stroke. Let's go in here to curve modifiers. Let's turn on intensity and size. Take this curve fall off and hit flip horizontally. So now when we update this curve, it's going to go thick to thin. You don't have to go that thin. We can pull that up just a little bit and tap to re-update. Um, also, it looks like maybe if we go in here to our brush options, and we go in here to depth. We can set this embed to say zero, and that'll put that curve right down the middle of that. So now we've got kind of a hair curve brush here, and if you want to save this, I'm going to brush save as. I'm going to go into my program files pixel to ZBrush 21, 2021, ZBrushes. I'm just going to right click in here, say new folder, say underscore hair. Call that generic hair, and then now when I hit my comma key and go into brush, and now I have a hair folder I can pull from, so I can just load this up whenever I need to. Now the whole point of that was I can always go back here, and like I mentioned before, if I want to replace these with anything else, and I put a bracelet in there, but again, if I didn't spell it out enough, you could replace these with hair two different ways. Uh, in the previous video, we showed micro mesh, so we'll go over that, but you can also go through here. And let's turn up this uh, dynamic segments to two. So now each one of these segments will get a line through it. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply to make that real geometry. I'm going to go through here and we're going to say polygroups, group by normals. I'm going to turn off that texture map so we can see our polygroups here. And so all of these ones here have a polygroup with a line down the middle. So if I want to go ahead and split those off, now I can use these as control curves. So I can go through here and I can say polygroup polyloop. I can grab this one. Actually, I can hit control W, make it all one polygroup. And then I can go through here and I can polygroup this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. I can go back over here to my stroke, say frame my polygroup border meshes, grab that new hairbrush we just made, tap, and now it's going to go and put a hair a custom hair IMM brush right down the middle of those planes. If I don't need those planes anymore, um, I can try and tap off to get rid of these curves. If I can't quite do that, I can always go in here and say delete under curve functions. Now those cards are still in there. So I can go into visibility, hide point. There's my cards. I can hold down control shift, select rectangle, drag in my document to invert that selection. And I can either go to geometry, modify topology, delete hidden, 
or I can go in here to split under subtool and say split hidden if I want to keep those cards around. So that's just one way where you can kind of go through and do that. Now if I go all the way back to where these were just hair cards, let me go ahead and delete these fibers here. So again, there's this fiber hair cards. And I think we had underneath our fiber mesh here. I want to say we put like nine segments in. I suppose it doesn't really matter, but what I can do is I can make a micro mesh. Where we go in here and we say, give me a new plane 3D, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. I'm gonna hold down control shift. I'm gonna grab half this plane, hit control W. And one more time, we're just gonna stroke this with the frame mesh poly groups. We're gonna take our new brush here that has that taper on it. And then we're just gonna put a hair, mat, hair card right down the middle. If we tap off and then we say to get rid of that curve and go in here to geometry, I'm sorry, uh, subtool, split mass points, go out of solo mode. Uh, you can see this is a little bit bigger than that square as far as the height is concerned. So we're gonna go back down here to deformation, hit unify, and then if I wanted to be predictable when I add it as a micro mesh, I'm just gonna scale this entire thing out. So it kind of fits this and we're actually gonna maybe scale it up this way as well, we'll try that. So now we're gonna go over here and we're gonna turn off that plane. We're gonna use this as our micro mesh. So we go back into our hair here. Let's turn off everything except for this. And let's also go down here and turn that texture map off. So now, if we go in here to geometry, modify topology, micro mesh, we grab our micro mesh here. Say, it's gonna say you have to go into the render menu, render properties, draw micro mesh. We can hit render, and it's gonna replace every single one of those with that new hair topology we just made. Now, it didn't do it for real, but it did go root to tip. So, uh, if we render this out, and it's like, yeah, that's about right, that's about what I would expect. Then go in here to geometry, convert BPR to geo, and now I have every single one of those hair strands recreated with these tapered hair strands, basically. And at this point, you can always go in here to like, deformation inflate, you know, whatever you wanna do. So, that's just another way where you can kind of control curves and then use micro mesh and then change out that micro mesh with something else.